So, hello everybody. <laughs> Thanks for coming here. And uh, today I'm going to talk about pixel art. And I'm going to talk about uh, what is pixel art at first, then about the past of the pi uh, pixel art uh, in gaming, also wh why, why there's pixel art still today. Uh, then I'm going to give you some tips uh, how to do your own pixel art and then I'm going to talk about the future. Also there will be lots of cats, so pre prepared for that. And the disclaimer, I'm not saying that pixel art is the most, um, it's the best uh, uh, way to make art for video games. Uh, I think there's, uh, there's uh, many different ways and uh, today I'm just uh, talking about why pixel art is quite a good way to make uh, art for video games especially. So let's start for the, from the beginning. Uh, pixel art. So Wikipedia says that pixel art is a form of digital art created through the use of software where images are edited on the pixel level. It's, it's not, it's just, um, so there's uh, two types of computer graphics. Uh, one is raster graphics, other is vector graphics. Vector graphics are uh, dots and lines uh, and curves between it. And it's uh, the computer must uh, do some ma mathematics to uh, just know where the lines are. With raster graphics, uh, there's uh, different colored pixels uh, on the screen. They could be whatever uh, size or shape. And uh, us usually today's uh, graphics, uh, one pixel is uh, square. Um, so here's, here's, here's a vector and pixel again, raster graphics. So it's a grid on your screen where the image is uh, shown. So um, what about pixel art? Um, uh, pixel art is raster graphics that's, uh, that has a really low resolution so you could see it, all the pixels on the screen. So it's uh, really visible. And, and um, most of the 8-bit and 16-bit uh, computers and consoles and other systems are pixel art. Uh, they have pixel art on their screen because all the fonts and everything is also um, pixel art and the uh, graphs. This one is a <laughs> graphing uh, calculator and there's somebody made Skyrim for uh, it. So yeah, I think it's the most nerdy thing I have ever seen. It's quite cool. So have you done any pixel art? And I'm not asking you, I'm saying that you have, because uh, if you have even uh, uh, just filled one square in your notebook with your pen, then you have made pixel art. Also, if you have ever uh, opened up uh, Microsoft Paint and uh, took some tools and made whatever, just a square in there, then you have made pixel art already. I just wanted to ask how, how many of you have has done uh, uh, like um, computer pixel art with any other program than the Microsoft Paint? Raise your hand. <laughs> okay, that's good. So, yeah, there's also physical forms of uh, pixel art. Uh, it's uh, some of the pixel art fans are making cosplay. Uh, and also little uh, figure, figures and all the, of your grannies have all, uh, also done some pixel art because if they have knitted some uh, mittens for you then it's that. Uh, when I went to the uh, Estonian National Museum a few weeks ago then I saw this uh, rock and I thought oh, that's so cool. It's it's pixel art from uh, 1915. So, yeah, why pixels then? 
It's because um, raster graphics take less computing power than pixel graphics. So the output is uh, pixels already, so uh, they don't have to do this uh, curve mathematics. Uh, and in the past, it was um, the only, uh, well, you could make some raster, uh, I mean, uh, vector graphics. It was um, with uh, some uh, not so usual uh, computers. But uh, yeah, there in the older games, everybody wanted to um, just make them look really cool, and this was the only way they could uh, do anything. So they had really many restrictions, and they wanted to get over it. So one way to try to make uh, things more uh, real or uh, great looking <laughs> it was uh, the uh, method called dithering. It's uh, they ha they didn't only have a few pixels to use; they only had few colors also. So to mix those colors together, they used dithering, and that's also used for the retro feeling today in the pixel art in the games or in other pixel art. So yeah, uh, if you want to hear Mark Ferrari, who has done LucasArts Games uh, graphics uh, talk, then it's like uh, one and a half hour and it's really good. So you can just get the link. I will post the uh, talk uh, later. So yeah, uh, he had some really cool stuff he did. And he invented some uh, new ways to overcome this um, problem of uh, having only pixels. And uh, he wanted to make some really cool um, looking realistic animations and uh, he wanted to do it fast. So he did this thing called uh, color cycling. Uh, how he did it is that he took this um, he painted this uh, whole scene only once and he took the colors and he made a palette next to the next to the picture and he changed the colors uh, of the pixels only without uh, making new uh, illustrations so this is only one drawing altogether all both of these are like only colors have uh, been changed and the animation also, it's um, uh, also used today sometimes. So we have really good computers now. Why should anyone do pixel art anymore? And also there's uh, already so many pixel art indie games um, that I just uh, took it from Steam. There's a 861 uh, games on Steam uh, that has pixel art. So it's um, uh, there's are there are many reasons you should have pixel art games. Um, yes, there are many, <laughs> but they're all different. And I think there there's uh, still really many like uh, things you could use. And because the computers are much uh, faster nowadays you could uh, have uh, quite of like um, interesting uh, stuff uh, in your pixel art and I'm going to talk about that also. So yeah first if you're going to make your <laughs> a game <laughs> by yourself then um, well you won't have graphics like that but you can have like um, really awesome looking graphics if you do something simpler uh, have some restrictions like pixel uh, pixelated screen is one uh, great restriction for that. So there's uh, another reason why to do pixel art is that uh, many people think it's really nostalgic and it gives another layer for your game. So this is uh, Shovel Knight. It's a really good game. Uh, how many of you have heard of it? Okay, yeah or something as uh, yeah it's um, it's uh, it has all of the cool uh, old game 
feeling, uh, looks, and also it has uh, like the game mechanics that are good and it threw out all of the frustration in choosing uh, stuff from the old games so they just uh, made a perfect uh, retro ga game also it's a uh, widescreen and uh, though it uh, looks like an old game it's, uh, it, it's um, yeah, modernized a lot um, yeah and those games are uh, called high bit games, uh, and this one is uh, uh, old boy, old boy or whatever. Uh, it's another game that took like nine years to make, but it's uh, like really big and uh, awesome. But you don't have to <laughs> make your game in nine years. There's there's lots of uh, pixel art games that look really good that have done by one person in one year or something like that. Yeah, so there are some games that don't look as good, but uh, Undertale, uh, many of you know, it's but it's it's a really good game. But it's another reason why you should have pixel art uh, because if it didn't have pixel art, art I'm sure it would. Uh, look even worse than this and if people are looking at this and they hear good things about this game then uh, they're like wow this this must really have some awesome uh, stuff in it because it doesn't look so great and that's why it just blew up and uh, everybody started playing this game because uh, they had like a uh, little fan base that were like uh, crazy over this game and uh, and, and uh, all of the other people were seeing the craziness of the fans and wanted to try it also because it's, uh, it's like doesn't look that well <laughs> good also uh, another reason why to make pixel art is um, that restrictions help with creativity. Um, it's, uh, it sounds kind of weird at first, but if somebody says like takes like scissors and pencil and some tape and stuff and make some I don't know a sculpture of it, then it's um, it could be quite good. But if somebody is uh, telling you just make a sculpture, then you're like uh, taking too much time. Or okay, what I'm going, to, I have so many possibilities. What should I do? Like, uh, and you're going to maybe make it still in clay, and it, that's like, uh, uh, yeah, the obvi obvious answer. So about Maria, um, he there's a reason why he has a mustache. It's because uh, when he's on the screen uh, and really little, uh, the resolution of Mario is really low. There's really not so much pixels on him. So, <laughs> so uh, the mouth look it looked uh, some kind of odd. So uh, uh, you couldn't see really his mouth. So they uh, they added a pixel to make it a mustache or two pixels or something. And also the guy thought that uh, who made this uh, Mario then he was like oh I can't do this pixelated uh, hair he, and he just uh, he has a hat now and now Mario is like that <laughs> and well this is a Mario without mustache and I, I'm not sure how I feel about that it's <laughs> like kind of no <laughs> so those were the reasons. Any questions? Uh, yes. What is high, high bit? Oh yeah, high, high bit. Yeah, high bit are these uh, new old style games. These two that have like uh, white screen. They are kind of like uh, old. They are looking like old games uh, and they have restricted palettes like uh, in the old days but they still use more colors making them today. So they kind of 
fool you with that, but they look a bit better. So uh, yeah, that's hype it today. So there's yeah quite a many games coming up this in this genre. Uh, so any more questions? No. <laughs> okay. So first things first, software. Well. This is Microsoft Excel, but you shouldn't ha um, like use this for your pixel art. But it's it's just you can make a pixel art with whatever. So uh, here's a really great list for uh, all the pixel art uh, um, programs you can use. And I don't have my own favorite because um, I think everybody should use what they're like are like have used already and uh, feel good with but if if you haven't had any experience with uh, with uh, these programs then just uh, yes you can choose from uh, from the first ones i think i have uh, tried the uh, first three and also some of them some of the others but yeah the list is uh, quite long in there, and there's also uh, it's uh, voted up. So these uh, these are the most popular and mo most liked uh, programs for making pixel art. So yeah, there's um, uh, graphic scale is quite good. That's uh, that's the one in here, and your pixel art program should have like. Uh, I, I'm sure that most of them have it. Some things. Uh, first is the grid. You have to have the visible grid to make it easier. Also, some tools to make it really. You should have a line tool or like uh, you should have <laughs> square and uh, circle tools because uh, when I started, I just drew every everything by pen and it's. <laughs> it's a kind of time consuming and stupid thing to do, so don't do that. Also, you should have onion skin layering so you'll uh, see all the. all the. what are those? Uh, frames? Frames, yes. Uh, frames are your, of your animation. And onion skin layering is like if you're on one frame and drawing it then you can see through the other frames so you can like make your uh, animations uh, better that way also it's a good uh, uh, to have a small preview of your pixel art because there's um, uh, if you're really up close and you're drawing then you can't see how the finished thing looks uh, from far away and uh, usually you could like mess something up and it's uh, it kind of looks good if you're really close but it's uh, it doesn't if it's uh, yeah from far ahead so yeah and so you'll have to decide if you're making a game uh, how first how many pixels how detailed you want your game to be so if you're making an action-based game like this one with Nidhogg, it's uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it has um, it's quite low re resolutions and the sprites, um, the little guys are are not so detailed and uh, it, it looks really fine that way. But if you want to make a game that where you have to have more emotion. Uh, on your characters, then you'll have to have some more detailed characters. Um, yeah, and so the less resolution you have, the smaller the sprites, the simpler it is, and it takes a lot less time. And if you're just starting, then you should uh, try to do like um, really like. Um, really small sprites uh, but there's the thing that Mario doesn't have any expressions he just looks 
blankly into the void or something. Uh, but the Sonic in here can like be really cool or scared or surprised, and, and uh, that's why he has like this uh, big head. Also, it's uh, quite common in pixel art to have big e heads on the sprites because uh, then you can, and also eyes, then you can see their expressions and also all of the cartoony stuff looks better in pixel art usually there are some exceptions so as you can see the Mario is like uh, only the size of the face of, uh, of Sonic I was quite surprised that that uh, he is so r low re resolution compared to him so deciding on the style uh, cartoonish is the first thing to try so th these uh, guys in here have like really long legs and they have like they are really cute and uh, cartoony uh, that's one way to do your pixel art um, it's uh, really good to look some at some comics or cartoons and try to do uh, this kind of uh, pixel art or the other type is uh, realistic and the best way to do that is a, r a thing called rotoscoping so it's um, basically you you can uh, film yourself or somebody other and they can act for you and then you make this uh, film like um, have really less uh, frames and then you can just draw over it. If you feel like you don't have uh, like this uh, cartoonish artistic style, then you can do this kind of um, uh, thing that it really looks good. Uh, Prince of Persia was uh, one of the games that made it and, and it really looks like uh, he's running and jumping uh, and it's kind of weird when it's in this pixelated wor world that should look like less uh, real or something. So yeah, another thing really important is colors. Um, you should, like I said before, restrictions, like you, ha you are already restricted with uh, pixels, pixels pixels <laughs> but you should make uh, your own um, color palette for your game and then um, just draw out some colors and uh, use the other ones uh, also you should want to use like really bright and um, uh, different colors for the most important parts so in here you can see there's mostly like purplish, uh, pinkish and bluish colors but only the main character has yellow nobody else does and uh, there's also the thing that like uh, there's you should you can have like uh, different styles you can have your game like look really dark and mysterious or something and you then you should just throw out even more colors <laughs> if you want to and then you can throw out even more colors and make it look like it's a really old nostalgic uh, game for your I don't know phone or something <laughs> old phone <laughs> and light lighting that doesn't have to be lightning, it's lighting. So, <laughs> uh, the most commonly used thing in uh, pixel art and other art also to make this uh, lo everything look like 3D, then you should have uh, lighting and you should have it cast on different things that has like, it makes some lines on the art. Um, so the outlines would be much um, in here too. 
you can see the outlines are much uh, brighter and it uh, makes everything look really really good it's the thing that you should really use um, and also yeah the details are uh, really important and you if you want to draw some attention or some or on some details then you can use uh, like I said before like colors that you don't use anywhere else like if we look closer at this photo I mean I mean uh, on this cat uh, there then there's like um, there's only one square there's only one pixel but you can like understand it's their tongues and you can only see it because nowhere else in this picture or maybe somewhere uh, they don't have this uh, color red so it's uh, really important if you want to make some really small things then you should use like really different color also I'm like really amazed how how can one pixel be so cute or something <laughs> you know well uh, so animation um, when animating uh, pixel art usually people use this thing that they are selecting their pixel art so let's say we're making this animation so they're just selecting most of the character so they don't select the legs in here and they are like um, on the next uh, frame they are just moving the character one pixel down and it already looks like they're uh, moving you could use it you could m do it much uh, this is really easy uh, but you don't have to like draw uh, all of your new uh, frames one by one you should just uh, copy them copy parts of it uh, then cut them apart and then just draw the spaces where they are different like um, uh, this is a uh, an animation I made for a game trend the fishy thing uh, that's made also like that uh, all of the parts are just copied also moved a bit and then I just uh, threw in some changes that were in there and there are some really good uh, videos on YouTube how to do animation and these are my favorite ones and I just link them in the here you can see them later maybe and if you feel like really stuck you're like my art pixel art sucks and I can't like I don't know what I like uh, should do then you should just study some uh, other art like pixel art and just replicate it um, like I did well there's I really like this Scott Pilgrim game so I made some uh, sprites of it uh, and uh, yeah and I learned a lot just uh, putting these one by one in the place and it's uh, it just yeah it takes <laughs> some time but it's but it's quite fun and um, okay and then then the future there's I'm sure there's going to be like really cool games uh, that ha use pixel art together with uh, different methods so you can see this cat he, he's not uh, entire, pi entirely pixelated uh, the color that's blinking it's it's not uh, you, you can't see the pixels inside of it also there's um, this um, how many of you know what voxels are <laughs> okay most of you <laughs> well voxels are pixels but in 3d basically minecraft is also a voxel game uh, some have said that it's not but, but there's yeah there's different uh, like uh, people thinking different things about it but yeah a lot of uh, voxel games are coming out some of them are for uh, 
uh, mobile so also it's it's quite cool and uh, there's um, yes so you can do your art also like in vector and you can like just put it into the pixel world and just um, well this is basically what the computer is doing when it's showing us uh, stuff uh, but it's uh, uh, if there the uh, shapes are really simple it looks quite good so you can make like uh, 3d objects and just just uh, render them out like uh, really in a uh, low resolution it's uh, kind of uh, but if you're like uh, taking some um, mm, photos or something and uh, making them low resolutions then then it doesn't look so good and sometimes if you're making it really low resolution you can't understand anymore what it is about uh, that's why the low resolution uh, pixel art should have uh, this cartoony characters that you paint already in pixel art, not make it uh, really crisp looking and clean and then render them like really low in low quality. So yeah, there's... Um, ah, this is... <laughs> well, there's different uh, ways to like use your pixel art. If you have already drawn like a bow or something, then you can like rotate it in your I don't know game program, uh, or you could uh, rotate them and then pixelate them again. Then they look kind of weird, uh, but it looks better this way usually because rotating uh, pixels is looks uh, kind of. We are they can show you in here, yeah. So, uh, well, some of some people like to make these kinds of uh, things, but there's you can look at these uh, plants or something, and they're they are, are pixelated and they're moving around like this, and they like they're g going out of the grid. They should be in kind of uh, but in here the pixels are in the same place only the color of the pixels are is changing didn't everybody get it yes okay <laughs> good <laughs> is it, does it depend on actual object or, or is it like always that, uh, that the red is better no, it's it's you can use it uh, different ways. Yeah, it's not uh, retro style isn't always better. I really like if uh, people are mixing uh, the new game styles with old ones. They're getting like really new looking games uh, that haven't been done before. But some of the people really like the old retro look. So it depends on how you look at it what's your preferences or something and um, yeah so today's games lo look like this like pixel art games <laughs> so there's in the future I'm sure there will be more like this so this is what, what happens if you take your pixel art and put it in like in unit and throw all of the effects on it or something and I think it <laughs> this game looks kind of cool and stuff. This this is actually three D. Yes, well it's it, well it's like layer two D. There's different. No, it's not. Yeah, it's uh, there's pixel art. So this is the bridge and the guy and this here. But this this actually rendered in three D and then somehow. Yes. Okay. Yes, there's background. There's. Yeah, it's rendered in 3D. There's uh, different layers just put up in there, and also there's like 3D water down on here, 
That's not pixel art. This is already really stretching the definition of pixel art. Yeah, but there's pixel art used in this. So it's not fully pixel art, but look at the guy. He's he is pixelated character, so you can use it in the games. And I really want to see more of this kind of games. Yeah, it's. Uh, I hope there will be. Yeah, but the scene is kind of. Yeah, so <laughs> that's basically it. Uh, again, yeah, I can show you. Uh, so this is a, a a really like easy web app that's kind of surprisingly good for making making some simple pixel art. And like I was saying, like uh, making everything by pen is like, yes, you can make like line this way or or this way. Or, uh, I, I don't mean it. I don't mean <laughs> to make this. Okay, well, but I meant like uh, you can't make like the this thing. It's what what? That's 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 just no. Okay, well, let's say you want to uh, like do a. I don't know, pentagram or something, you just have to uh, take the stroke tool and uh, just do it this way, please. Like, really, it's uh, just so, so much easier this way for doing also using like the circle tool and everything. <laughs> so, yeah, square tool is really good also. There's uh, like those basic things and I'm kind of amazed why I didn't use them at first. Uh, also, there's in here, there are quite kind of cool um, uh, pixel art uh, stuff in here, like uh, mirror pen that's really good for doing stuff. Yeah, and also, like I said, it, uh, this is you add frames in here, so you can have different frames, you can like duplicate them, then you can uh, just uh, the way I'm doing the animations, like I said, was uh, like I'm selecting part of this and I might like move it or wait, it doesn't take this. No, okay, well, can't move this. Also, there's a dithering tool that's really cool that, that when you have like some color, okay. So you have this rectangle and you have dithering tool is so you take another color and then it okay it doesn't work in here like that I wanted to but yeah basically so there's uh, the it has all the basic stuff you should have for your making your pixel art so if you if you'd like to try, then it's uh, the right place to start. And if you like it, then you should uh, consider some of the programs that I listed in there. And yeah, yeah also like selecting stuff. All the selection tools are like really good for making animations. Yeah. Does it render an animation in there? Yeah, it's that, it, that is the animation right now. Like okay. that's the blinking thing <laughs> in here. You could like have some mm -hmm. stuff. It's now I don't know. Just do you have any good software where you can set the colors, for example, when you have already uh, drawn some pictures? Oh yes, 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 yes. Of course. And There's uh, the that's uh, the flash. Uh, the new flash. I mean, like the Adobe CC is really good at it. Like, if you want to, if you like Adobe programs like Photoshop or something and really want to do uh, cool, like, uh, pixel art or some other animations then, or sprites or something, it's a really cool tool because you can, like, um, there, 
uh, one thing you can do is uh, when you like you make your palette let's say this green color and you like through something and uh, everything that has this green color like all the animation everything you can change it you can change it from the palette so so you can just uh, change it out and it looks like uh, then you're like oh i want this wizard to have like green coat instead of uh, blue one then or you want to have all the colors and you can just change it with one click and to make just just save the uh, stuff and there's hey, what's, uh, what was the software Adobe CC like at, at Adobe animation uh, animation it's uh, it's uh, it used to be flash before its name was flash but they made this change uh, and uh, like people don't didn't uh, like the flash be anymore because it was well people don't use flash like in browsers like in your your phone don't like doesn't just isn't accepting flash so you have to use something else and also they were doing the wrong thing the people who were using uh, flash before didn't have the things they wanted they were people who were doing art for their games also people who were doing art for their like youtube channel animation and they didn't want the whole full flash thingy they just wanted to do the sprites and stuff and animate them um, and now it's like three times better program than it was before so i can like animation. recommend it really good adobe animation yeah yeah so yeah that's it i think from me right now or would you like to see some videos? <laughs> cat videos. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, pixelated cat videos. Well, I can, I can show you. Um, I can show you this one. Wait, where is it? Uh, or any questions? Yeah. So, so what do you think about this uh, isometric? Um, yes. Style of pixel art where there are like strict rules that you only only can use like straight lines of light mm -hmm. and thirty degrees. There yes. Like two steps. They're quite good for video games. Uh, I really like the style, and it's great because like uh, it looks even better. Like. Um, the things that are further don't, don't have to be smaller and stuff like in the screen and it's uh, the same way like uh, in the games that are like uh, from the up view and everything so it's it's not so hard to do it and it's kind of good cool looking way i don't know to make this art yeah yeah of course uh, like give yourself <laughs> yourself more rules you'll just have to just solve the problems and maybe you you just push yourself to do something that you ha wouldn't have done otherwise and that's the basis of the pixel art um, yeah like i said like mario has a hat because of pixelated uh, stuff and also the mustache uh, otherwise he would just Looked like a normal guy. <laughs> so there's some. Oh, yeah, this one. Owlboy and Hyperlight Drifter have been two of my favorite games this year. While the gameplay between the two is not similar in any regard, Hyperlight Drifter demands quick reactions to combat intense enemies densely packed into bleak dungeons, forcing a mix of dashing, shooting, and slashing to power forward. While Owlboy feels a lot slower by comparison, and it mixes classic Zelda dungeon puzzle design with Metal Slug-esque shooting, despite that, they do share some similarities. Both were passion projects of small teams, Heart Machine and D-Pad Studios respectively, each bound to their own heartfelt stories of development. Alex Preston, the man behind Hyperlight Drifter, suffers from a heart condition which could take his life at any time, shining through in both the game's story and themes, while Owlboy was in the making for 9 years. 
having started development back for the Xbox 360 before finally coming out nearly a decade later, resulting in a very emotional launch day for the studio. Like their respective developers, both share bittersweet stories about overcoming great personal difficulties, and both share in the dawn of a new style of retro-inspired games, the Hybit Era. Joe Remy Madsen, programmer and co-founder of D-Pad Studios, wrote a blog post on the company's website describing how pixel art is entering a new era. Madsen writes, We recently showed our game around, and one thing people seem to keep coming back to is the fact it looks like an SNES game, but better. With the recent announcement of Sonic Mania and Hyperlight Drifter, something fantastic is happening. Pixel games are back, and people don't think they look like crap anymore. While these games may be paying homage to the 16-bit era that started with the Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive, they're working beyond the limits of the tech in the 90s. If you've ever played a classic game on Nintendo's virtual console service, you'll notice that, in order to remain faithful to their source material, the games have simply been upscaled to be played on modern TVs or consoles. Given that the Wii and 3DS only output in 480p and 280p respectively, this wasn't a huge deal. While the Wii U is able to output at 1080p, it has a significantly smaller virtual console library than its lower resolution counterparts, and I'd wager to guess as this being the reason why. What Madsen says this new style of pixel art games brings to the table are games built from the ground up for widescreen. They're not made to be played on lower resolutions because that would cut out a lot of the beautiful art designers poured hours upon hours into. Of course, Hyperlight Drifter and Owlboy are not the pioneers of this dawning new era. Madsen just happened to be the one noticing the trend and decided to coin a phrase. Madsen cites in the article that Fez was the earliest game he had seen in the style. And whether that is true or not, it was definitely the first to gain mainstream attention, setting the trend in motion. In reference to D-Pad's previous release, Madsen goes on to state, Players were rating our game savant negatively because we lacked widescreen support. If Shovel Knight had opted to work with the old NES resolution, they would have discovered the same issue we did. And that's absolutely true. Last year, 2D pixel fighter Yadagarasu came out paying homage to one of my favorite games in the genre, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. While the game looked and played beautifully, it lacked the widescreen support that in turn cost the game sales and a day one audience, which could be the reason the developers have stopped supporting the game even over a year later not delivering on promises made for their Indiegogo campaign. This proves that, while it's good to pay homage to the classics, doing so in a modern sense is the only feasible way to compete with modern day games. This isn't to say games with lower resolutions can't have amazing art. Using Yetagorasu as an example again, it has some finely detailed character animations that really stand strong. It's that the market doesn't want to react to these kinds of games, and they're almost limited to PC storefronts or maybe the 3DS. While games that support widescreen can easily be played on any modern console, yielding a much wider audience. With a lack of restrictive sound cards, this has opened up these games to be accompanied by fantastically composed pieces of music. Not to say that pixel art games shouldn't have chiptune soundtracks. Just listen to Shovel Knight's score by Jake Kaufman. We've reached a time of lessons restrictions for these kinds of games, so why not break down every barrier possible while we're at it? Just because we want to play games like the ones from days gone by, doesn't mean we have to play by their limitations either. Time has always been a major factor in the development process. A lot of games are met with strict deadlines, that's a given. However, the sheer amount of detail that can be achieved with higher resolutions now is staggering. Just looking to Owlboy, it is one of the best looking games I've played recently. A clear amount of effort went into making every part of this experience eye-catching. Despite it having a now famous long development cycle, a lot of time went into the art as opposed to significantly fleshing out dungeons or the overworld. Although personally I don't mind this, because I would prefer a short game that holds my attention the entire way, rather than a big bloated mess that's lost its focus. A lot of the game's Madsen references are yet to be released, games such as Chasm and Sonic Mania, but judging from their trailers and screenshots, the new era of Hybit is going to be a big one, one that will grow in ways we can't even imagine. When looking to pushing pixel art in new directions, Simon S. Anderson, artist that D-Pad Studios and brainchild behind Owlboy has said, would artists abandon the art of painting once the photo camera was invented? Would artists abandon sculpting once 3D printing became a thing? They wouldn't, but they would need to push the medium even further than before to remain impressive. And that's what we're seeing here with these upcoming and recently released games. Stardew Valley is another game from this year that was so good in fact I'm afraid to admit the sheer amount of time I've put into my digital farm. And it has some genuinely breathtaking moments, especially those seen in the transitions between seasons. While indie gaming seems to be at the forefront of this new era, with the notable exception of the previously mentioned Sonic Mania, I'd like to see Nintendo do something with this. I know they've been skimming through on re-releasing old games either through HD upgrades or via the eShop, but I would love to see Hybit remakes of classic Mario platformers. 
Or why not go all the way in and start designing new 2D Mario platformers in this style? While Nintendo isn't usually one to take a step back on their design philosophies, they have done something similar in the past with the original Super Mario Bros trilogy in the All-Stars package. With technology where it is now, I think it'll be interesting to see the plumber return to the former Mushroom Kingdom in highly detailed worlds. To remain relevant in the modern era, pixel art had to evolve, and this is just the beginning of what's to come. While some will scorn at the idea of pixels over polygons, there is always room for both, and it just boils down to playing to the strength of your team and what they can do to shine brightest. this and there's some um, there's some more information about it in here that uh, talks about voxels more so it's uh, somewhere okay so there's hmm so I took it from here <laughs> these ones so there's I think there were some kind of cool like explanations okay so mm, no okay there's no with pixel art basically so like this rotation thing um i'm not saying it's it's the thing you should do like it's um there are other ways like uh, you could the question is is the thing to do with translation Oh no, uh, it's basically for rotating and oh, okay. some of them. Okay. Uh, yeah, rotating, like you can see here. Yeah. So the character is moving like this, but, but his head and the... <laughs> uh, yeah. What he's playing? Badminton. Okay. <laughs> so, so these parts mm -hmm. yeah. are moving. But you would still have to like... Uh, oh, you could move the hands and stuff uh, this way. Okay, uh, there's uh, also there. It's kind of... It's really good article. Uh, okay, here. see there's bones in the mm -hmm. person and it's uh, like uh, shown in higher resolution screen so in here it's pixelated so it's more uh, the pixels are moving like uh, yeah. it's like lower made into lower resolution in here and in here it isn't okay. so you can see the difference 
Yes. Um, I have been starting to, to keep uh, practicing this pixel art thing. One of the things that I have found uh, more challenging is to make dithering. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, to make good use of the small amount of colors and to give the impression that light is projected on, on, on anything. Because I think uh, if you uh, project light well, it's a game changer. People can understand what they're trying to, to show there. I don't know if maybe you have some hints on how to approach this right? Uh, well, yeah, it depends on how big resolution the characters are, because if you have like really uh, small characters, like uh, pixel-wise, there's like 16 by 16, then it's really hard to dither them, them. they're like, uh, they have to, they da don't have enough uh, pixels for that, but if uh, dithering is more for like, bigger, like, better for like, uh, like let's say walls or bigger ob objects, and uh, if it's like some table or something and it's, it's bigger, um, I don't know, but it, if you want to make kind of like uh, uh, high resolution, higher resolution pixel art with characters, then uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure either how to do it. Uh, the lighting thing is that one way you could do is, like I said, like uh, just uh, make the uh, edges of characters uh, uh, lighter or then Okay, there's a lot of scrolling. Um, so th here's uh, some really weird uh, things that you did with uh, li lighting. Uh, it's like the <laughs> it's really difficult. Uh, you just have to like um, mm, yeah, it's called. Some kind yeah, actually, I read about a very interesting technology where you can do an isometric, uh, those isometric projects that you basically have this uh, 2D isometric graphics, but you somehow render light in 3D. Yeah. So it's I, I, I'm not sure about the details, but if you do dynamic lighting in isometric graphics. I found something about it. it was like a library that allows you to project light on but it has to be I mean you have to draw uh, your pixel art or your character in, in a certain amount of colors and then the library can take over and you can do basically something like that. Yeah, that's how mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. But it, had, it was a paint library at the end, so you couldn't really test it. I saw it in some of the programs, but I am not sure which one of them it was. Uh, you could also, yeah, like uh, it's lighting the edges and stuff, and it looks at the character and it just it comes out where the light would just go or something. You can. There's. I'm not sure what program it was. It was one of the most popular uh, pixel art programs I tried, but which one, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, also in the, uh, like, to talk about the, uh, this one. Uh, there was... Uh, Okay, in this one there was also some talk talk about uh, dithering, and he's like the like the king of dithering, the, this guy Mark Ferrari. So so he knows a lot of uh, about it. I think you should look into it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, something else or. Yeah, I will. I will make them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good.